Hello guys, how are you doing today? I want to thank all of you guys for taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. And to all my subscribers, thank you uh, for subscribing to my channel. And all the new subscribers, I appreciate you guys taking the time to subscribe and to watch my videos. Um, and you guys who haven't subscribed yet, I would appreciate if you subscribe, like, and share my videos. Um, the Lord put it on my heart to spread the gospel on YouTube, and I'm trying to reach as many souls as I can. So if you like, share the videos, it will be good for the algorithm. And because, you know, nowadays we are living in the last days, a lot of people need to get saved. And so I preach the gospel. I do not water it down. I preach it the way it's written in the Bible. You know, I try not to speak the truth and without compromise. I wanted to talk to you guys today about a, a prophetic dream. You know, it's like sometimes when we have prophetic dreams, at the same time, it can be a vision. This was of uh, Tupac Shakur, um, the rapper who got killed, and uh, he died in 1996. And I saw him in hell. He was in torment. Uh, but I, before I get into uh, the dream, though, I want to tell you guys what the Bible says about hell. There's about 149 verses in the Bible about hell. Uh, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, they talk a lot about hell. Jesus himself talked more about hell than heaven. So hell is a very serious subject. It's not something that we should take lightly. And the church nowadays do not speak about hell. Rarely do you ever hear church preach on the um, on the subject of hell. And hell is very important because there's a lot of people that's in church, they're not truly born again, they're not saved, they will end up going there. So because God takes sin very seriously, and he does not, he hates sin, he doesn't allow uh, sin to go unpunished. But unfortunately, a lot of people Take that by just going to church, that's good enough. You cannot keep going to church but living in sin. Okay? You have to repent. You cannot have any sin in your life. If you're struggling with pornography, um, fornication, homosexual, same sex attraction, um, adultery, you have to repent of your sins. If the Holy Spirit convict you, you just have to get on your knees and ask the Lord to help you. Sometimes, you know, we are in a bondage and we just need the Lord's help because I was in a bondage to pornography. I was in a bondage to go to the strip club and I spent a lot of money going to the strip club. I remember when I went into the, um, when I was in the Navy, I spent a lot of my um, enlistment bonus going to the strip club. So I was addicted to it. I was in bondage to it. You know, by the grace of the Lord, by the grace of God, He set me free from those sin. And I'm able to live a godly life. You know, all of us can live godly life. There will be persecution. The Bible said, you know, those who live a godly life will be persecuted. But it's fine to be persecuted because you have eternal life. You know, when the disciples went out and um, cast out demons, they was happy when they came back and told the Lord that. The Lord said, don't be happy that you cast out demons. Be happy that your name is written in the book of life. You know, my name is written in the book of life. And the Lord confirmed it to me. I know when I die, I'm going to be with the Lord because the Lord told me that already. And, and you know, that's why I am so open. You know, that, that's why I'm working so hard to try to get people saved. I'm always praying for the lost. You know, I care about the salvation of others. You know, I do not harbor any resentment. You know, I forgive my um, my mother. You know, I forgive my father. I don't have anything against, against anybody. And each day, I pray that the Lord will help me, um, will draw closer to me. So uh, let me get into the testimony, because I know some of you guys, that's what you guys want to hear. But let me uh, read uh, to you guys on the... Uh, this is in Matthew 13, Matthew 13, verses um, 
uh, 41. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna read the whole chapter. I'm just gonna start with verses 41. It says, the son of man will send out his angels and they will weed out his kingdom. Everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will be torn into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. So the reason I read that part is because that's relevant to a testimony I'm about to tell you guys. So uh, let me give you guys a little background. You know, some of you guys who are not familiar with Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur was a very famous rapper. Um, he blew up on the early 90s. Uh, I think his first, I don't remember correctly, I'm not looking at his Wikipedia in front of me. He came out with Me Against the World. He came out with All Eyes on Me. He came out with Michael Belly. So um, I think before he got murdered, the last album he came out with, uh, he called it All Eyes on Me. And it was like a double CD album. That album came out, I think, like 96 or 95. And then he got murdered in, like, when I was September 96, he went to Las Vegas. He um, he assaulted um, this guy, this, this gang member. His name was Orlando Anderson. He assaulted him. And then, the, he, you know, uh, Tupac Shakur's posse jumped Orlando Anderson. And then a few hours later, Tupac was driving on the um, Las Vegas Boulevard. And then Orlando Anderson and his, and his um, uh, gang pulled up and um, they shot, you know, they shoot up the car, they shot Tupac and, um, and shot Knight. Tupac spent some time in the hospital. I think he died a few days later. So he died um, in Las Vegas. And then um, the whole thing about Tupac is like when he was, during the 90s, he was, um, you know, I like some of his music myself. I think, to me, I think Tupac is one of the, um, I, I think he's the greatest one, the greatest rapper ever because I think most of his music has been classic. You know, even sometimes I feel like listening to some of his music because it's very classic, like it's timeless. Very few rappers, I cannot think of any rappers, maybe Nas or maybe some of Jay Z's songs, but very few of them pull out classics, classic uh, song like Tupac. So he's, he had, he had a, a tremendous impact on just the hip hop culture. He was such a big deal. And so he was just very hot in the early nineties. Then uh, uh, Notorious B.I.G. Biggie Small came out. Biggie Small was, was, was uh, you know, taking all the space and a lot of people were something like Biggie and, and then so that Tupac became jealous of that situation because he see Biggie he was getting too much attention. And you know, he felt like he was in the background, like everybody was so about like Biggie now the East Coast was getting all the attention and all that stuff. That started a few, that started an East and West Coast uh, few. And then that's why it led to both of them um, dying. Both of them got killed. Tupac got killed in 96, Biggie died six months later out of jealousy, out of beef and all that, um, over nothing really. Cause I mean, they can, you know, you're just making music. There's no need to uh, try to destroy somebody else because they are blown up, you know, cause I guess Tupac wanted all the attention by himself. So uh, a stupid beef started both of my head of dead. So that's why I wanted to give you guys a little background. So now let me give you guys a little background on myself. See. Once I start telling you guys a story about, two, uh, about what I saw Tupac and um, how I see Tupac, you guys will understand why I'm giving you all this background because it's relevant to the story. So my uh, my mother, right? Um, so it was my, my mother and my, um, I guess, her partner. We got into an argument, right? <clears throat> well, I don't remember how to... It was a while ago, so he, he said something. I don't remember what happened, so we got into an argument. And um, so I felt he did something to me that was unloyal. I felt, I felt he did um, he uh, did something I didn't like. So I, I had an unforgiveness in my heart for him. 
So I went to sleep that night after we had gotten into an argument. And then I felt like demonic spirit was, was tormenting me. Because the Bible talk about um, God will turn you over to the tormentors. The tormentors are demons. So the demons was tormenting me. And um, I just I just said, I, the whole time in the dream, I kept saying, oh, you know, I don't have anything against leaks on. That's, that's my uh, mother's partner. I said, I don't have anything against him. I kept repeating his name, kept saying, I don't have anything against him, while the demons was tormenting me. See, I was lying. Well, I mean, I had something against him. I had something in my heart against him. So that's why I was, you know, but, I, but I was saying I didn't have anything against him. So the demons was tormenting me until I got up the next day. I think I pray about that. And then, uh, you know, we, everything, we scratched everything. Everything was fine. All right. So when I had the dream, I saw Tupac. Tupac was crying, like, like he was really crying. You know how the Bible said they'd be weeping and gnashing of teeth? That's how Tupac was crying. It's kind of like when you um, when you go to a funeral, you see the way people cry at a funeral. Just a lot of wailing. They are wailing. They are uh, uh, gnashing their teeth. They just weeping. That's how I saw Tupac. And the whole time he kept saying, "I love Biggie. I love Biggie. I love Biggie." Like he kept crying, like, "Oh, I love Biggie!" Like like nonstop. And it just it was a horrible scene to look at. And it felt like he was powerless, like he couldn't do anything. And he would just, he couldn't move, he just, the whole time, he just kept crying, like nonstop crying. So the same way that I felt like when the demon was pressing down on my chest, tormenting me, that's the same thing that I feel like Tupac is going to right now. And when I see her, saw him weeping and just, just so much tears and then just, just crying, just, kept saying, I love Biggie, I love Biggie Small, I love Biggie. He kept saying that nonstop. So it just, you know, even putting out this video, guys, you know, I was kind of, I didn't really want to put it out. And I felt like, you know, when you become a soldier for the Lord, you know, you are a bond servant, like it says in the Bible, the Apostle Paul called himself a bond servant. I call myself a bond servant. It's not about us, guys. It's about the Lord. If the Lord wanted me to put out a video about that, so I put it out. Because there's a lot of people, he don't, God, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So he doesn't want anybody to be perished, guys. That's the reason why the Lord died on the cross. God will go above and beyond to try to save the lost. You know, so it's, uh, he wanted me to put out this video to know that Hell is a real place. Okay, hell is a real place in that judgment is real. He will judge sin. You know, God's judgment is for eternal. Tupac passed away. He got killed in 1996. That was 26 years ago. So he's been down there in torment ever since then. And he's going to be down there for eternity. I want you guys to let that sink in. 26 years he's been down there in torment, crying, weeping, calling, saying he loved Biggie. He's going to be there forever. It's, it's endless. It's eternal. There is no, you know, God will never change his mind and get you out of hell. Once you died in your sin, that's it. You cannot rest in peace. You know, unless you live for the Prince of Peace, which is Jesus Christ. So, if you're not living for the Lord, if you're breaking all His commandments, that means that you don't love Him. If you don't love Him, you cannot let you in His house. If somebody don't love you, don't love you, they reject your son. You're not gonna let them in your house. Well, that's the same thing with uh, with Tupac. Tupac. Uh, some of his songs, he even admitted that he might end up in hell. There's one song he said, when he died, baptized in eternal fire. When you live a life of blasphemy, drinking, sex, you know, just, just debauchery, that's the end result. The man is in torment. 
he just, man, it's just an ugly sight to see. It's just, I'm still thinking about that. And um, it just, I, I, I just, uh, I just cannot imagine, like, to be crying and, and keep repeating the, uh, your, you know, your enemy's name. You know, he considered Biggie his enemy. He kept repeating his name for eternity. The man just kept crying, nonstop. Like, you know, I never seen anything like that. I just, guys, hell is real, man. Hell is a real place. You, know, you guys need to stop playing games and stop taking God for a joke. God is not a joke. He's a loving God. But he's also terrifying. His judgment is extreme, eternal, eternity in the lake of fire. Throughout the whole Bible, 149 verses talks about Daniel, talks about um, you know, judgment, eternal judgment, the Psalms. Almost every book in the Bible talks about eternal judgment. But if the church do not speak about that, most people don't realize that. How serious God takes uh, sin. Jesus talked more about hell than heaven. Sin is a very serious uh, offense. When you sin, we transgress against God's law and you refuse to repent and humble yourself, humble yourself and repent. You know, He's going to put you down there into the lake of fire. First, you go to hell, then the final judgment is the lake of fire. The, you know, people that's in hell right now, because I remember I had an experience where I started going down to hell. My skin started coming off before I even get there, before I even got down there. So hell is a serious thing, guys. I want you guys to take that seriously. And, you know, God's grace is extreme. You know, he will forgive somebody like Jeffrey Diamond. Jeffrey Diamond got born again, got saved. And before he died, God will forgive somebody like that. Adolf Hitler could have been born again, got saved, and God will let him into heaven. You need to turn over from your sins. You need to repent. No sin is beyond God's grace. There is no sin that he will not forgive. The only sin that, it, the Bible says, the only sin that God will not forgive is a blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. But that, that, was, that was back then. But now, whatever sin that you committed, if you ever have an abortion, if you ever, uh, you know, commit adultery, you know, having sex outside of marriage, you lying, you know, discrimination, xenophobia, racism, you know, drugs, pornography, you know, you love money, you, you love sport, you put those things before God, idolatry. You know, whatever that you put before God, He's willing to forgive you. You need to turn away as long as you repent. You need to humble yourself and realize that you are a sinner, that you need a Savior. Right now, while, while you're alive, this is the time to repent. You need to repent of all your sins. If you don't, you died in your sins, you will go to hell. You will go straight to hell. You know, like I said before, it doesn't matter if you're a murderer, God forgives murder, he forgives lies, he forgives thieves, he forgives people who come in abortion. If you have an abortion, that's like coming a murder. He forgave all those sins. Abortion is murder, so let, let me make sure I get that clear. So when you come in an abortion, that's a murder. So you commit murder, so you have murder, you have blood in your hand. Uh, homosexuality, uh, all sin that's evil, God will forgive you of those sins. You have to humble yourself and ask for forgiveness. He's willing to forgive all sins. So this is the time of salvation while you are alive. Once you're dead, if you die with your sin, then, you, then, then that's it. Then you're gonna you're gonna stay in your sin. You're gonna you're gonna weep the benefit of that sin. You're gonna weep the reward of that sin, which is 
you're going to be tormented by demonic spirit. Tupac is in torment. He's been there for 26 years. He's going to be there for 26 trillion years. Eternity never ends. That's, that's even longer than that. That's longer than 26 trillion years because there is no end when it comes to eternity. The man is going to be dying. So, in closing, I want you guys to know that the Lord loves you. He died for you on the cross. He's, he just, you know, we just celebrate the Good Friday and Easter. His arm is wide open. He's a father. He's a loving father. He's willing to, uh, you know, he's waiting for you to come home to him. You are the prodigal son. You are the prodigal daughter. The Lord is waiting for you. Whatever you did in your past, whatever, you know, you, you are struggling with right now, he's here. He's looking at you. He's waiting for you to come to him. He loves you. He's not, he's not here to condemn you. No one's here to condemn you. We just have to tell you about your sin. God called preachers, ministers like myself to tell you about to repent, to come to him. We're not condemning you. We're just telling you that God loves you, but he wants you to repent. He, those, those sins that you committed, you committed those sins against him. All sin is committed against God alone. Doesn't matter if you commit it against somebody else, but it's really ultimately it's against God. So, okay, guys, I love you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Read your Bible. Seek the Lord with all your heart. Don't let anybody come before the Lord. The Lord should be your um, should be first place in your life. Thank you. May the Lord bless you.